you're seeing here is an empty aquarium. Now for those of you that know me, you'll know that an empty aquarium does not stay empty for long. Let's do something cool. So this size aquarium is like one of the most perfect sizes in my opinion. It's a really good starter size. I think it's probably one of the most common sizes in the hobby as well. And that's because quite a lot of fish can actually go in this tank. Now the fish we're putting in are these absolutely beautiful harlequin and lamb chop resporas now they're coming out of this tank because it's you know it's pretty big for just these fish look at them schooling they look so cool <laughs> yeah they're coming out of this tank because this tank's going to be used for some bigger fish that i've got coming up we're going to be putting in here these awesome blue akara that we've got up in this just sort of quarantine tank. So they're gonna, you know, hopefully breed in there and that should be awesome. So part of fish keeping is moving stuff around and creating new things. Look at this, look at that. Epistogramma there, Cacatoides, just having a little look. They can obviously see each other, these two, but um, don't seem to fight. They seem to be absolutely sort of okay with it. Anyway, <laughs> back to the fish in question. So I'm gonna keep the whole tank looking kind of rough, sort of like this, but way more controlled and with a bit more structure. So as always, first things first, let's get our nutrient layer down. I've been using a method recently of putting aqua soil into Ziploc bags, locking it right down and then capping the top. So that's what we're gonna do again. So crazy simple, take your mesh bags, chuck in a load of aqua soil simple as that really now these are like the fine mesh ones there's not big gaps between them because the aqua soil does release a bit of dust some will come off but majority stays in the bag you can find these bags on amazon by the way guys i'll leave a link in the description if you're interested So next up, I'm mixing two kinds of sands. One's really fine and one's a little bit more coarse, purely because I want to use up everything. I don't want to waste anything, you see. So I'm using the sand to cap over the top of the aqua soil. Now this isn't essential at all. You can just put aqua soil in the back and then sand in the front, but I find it really annoying when the aqua soil comes forwards, you have to keep picking it out. And also by keeping it separate this way, I can reuse the aqua soil again and I can reuse the sand again, completely separate. Like I say, I like to reuse materials as much as possible. Next up, it's time to get our hardscape in. I've got no idea what I'm doing here other than a triangle composition is what I wanted to go for. I just look at the pieces of wood and let them decide how they should sit. Now the long piece always looks good going right across the tank. The second piece, I started off with this bulky kind of like bog wood and then decided it didn't suit so I switched it up for some other pieces. If you don't always have the perfect size piece, don't be afraid to use a couple put together. You can disguise where they join with mosses and plants later on. And that's what I'm talking about, you see. You wouldn't even know that they weren't the same piece. I mean, there's a slight color variation, but that'll change in time, that they'll look exactly the same. And next up, it's time to start placing some rocks around the scape. These are locally sourced river pebbles. I just love river pebbles. They just look natural. You can chuck them in however you want. And that is the kind of look I want to go for with this scape as well. I'm making sure to keep them tight to the hardscape because I want to be able to glue them to the wood later on. That'll stop it floating up. So 
So I'm really happy with the point we've got to now. Now this is nothing like what the end result's gonna be. We're gonna have far more detail on the main structure. The sand itself is gonna be a completely different color, but it's a really good starting point. You can see I've taken up a huge area of the actual sort of viewing panel, if you like. Now there'll be plants in these sort of open areas. I've left gaps deliberately for the plants. We want a lot of green. The green with the Harlequins works really, really well. So, I mean, you can see that by how they are in the other tank and the colors popping against the green. We want to keep that theme going. Next up, it's time to get all of this stuck down. We're just going to use our Ciano Acrylate Super Glue Gel, stick everything to sort of everything else. I don't think any of this wood would float, wood wood <laughs> would float, but I, I don't want to take any risks. There's nothing worse than when you've sort of put this effort in and it floats up. Ugh. And then after this bit stuck down, I want to add more detail to it all with smaller twigs, just sort of bring it all in sort of directions and give it a really sort of aged, ancient look. So next up for this build, I wanna add a ton more detail to the hardscape already in the tank. And for that, we're gonna use the good old Cyanoacrylate Super Glue Gel. As always, this is not harmful to fish, shrimp, or plants, or anything like that. Now, because this is the gel form, it means it's quite good at sticking pieces together. It doesn't just drip down, it holds its shape. And that means you can press wood onto rock and vice versa, or whatever you want, really. So to start with, I'm just gonna glue everything together so it goes solid. That way if I knock it or anything, it's not gonna move about. Now, if you just use the gel on its own, it takes about 24 hours to set. But what I also like to do is add a sprinkle of bicarbonate soda or baking soda or baking powder or whatever you wanna call it to where I've put the glue and it makes it set a lot faster. Combine that with a spraying of water and yeah, it sticks in no time at all. Now for the detail, I'm adding small broken twigs of red moor root. It looks a bit funny color wise at the moment, but it should be fine. Within a couple of weeks, it'll go like a darker brown. It'll do its standard thing of making a load of like white slimy stuff all over it first. That's normal, it happens to all of us. Otosynclis catfish, Amano shrimp, that kind of thing, they get rid of it in no time, or just good old manual removal with a brush or something like that. Anyway, I'm trying to place the sticks with a little bit of direction going mainly the way the wood is going currently. But every now and again, swooping it back round and you know, creating some different lines that go in contrast to the overall flow. It just creates a bit more sort of interest to the skate, a bit more realism. So I've got a complete mixture of sticks. I've got thick ones and really thin ones. I'm kind of trying to get the main structure with the thick ones first and then laying the smaller ones on top sort of spreading out onto the sand area most of this is all going to have moss underneath it anyway but it should look really good just creeping through it I then felt that something was missing from this top section and i found the perfect piece just to loop across it's gonna look really good when we've got the plants going up at the moss under it i oh, can't wait so up next we're going to be adding in our decorative substrate so this sand isn't what we're keeping I want to go for something completely different this time. And this down here is what we're going for. Now I've washed it all out and let it sort of semi dry so it you know, just flows in the tank a little bit better and finds all the crevices it needs to. It's like a sort of, I don't know, it looks a bit like slate to be honest. I've never used anything this sort of dark before so it'd be interesting to see how it turns out. Obviously aqua soil but not in terms of a sand. I've got loads to, to like use as well. <laughs> So you can see here, I'm pulling the sand away from the front of the aquarium. This is because we're putting our decorative layer on the top. Now this is the stuff you're actually gonna see, and I want it to come right into the foreground, and I don't wanna see that sand layer underneath. I mean, you will see a little bit, but that's okay. You wanna pour it right at the front to start with, and this will stop the sand coming forward. Just pile it up and then push it backwards towards the back of the scape. I then noticed that there wasn't much media in this middle section and I need to bring it up a bit so we're able to plant in it later on. I also wanted to raise the back area a little bit more just to give us a bit more anchorage for the plants. And also it just looks better from a perspective point of view. So 
So doing this for me is massively out of my comfort zone. I normally stick to just your normal sort of pool filter sand, but I'm so glad I've given it a go. The stone really does give a high contrast to the wood and the rocks are looking good as well. They're not too in your face. I want to add some more details as we go along. I'm not sure what yet. I'm probably going to be adding lots of stuff in the foreground like epiphyte plants attached to small pebbles and that's going to give us a really good look against that dark, dark substrate, isn't it? Look at that. It looks so cool, doesn't it? Now, the good thing about this really dark base is that the green plants are going to pop like crazy against it. I'm really looking forward to getting this packed out. So we're attaching our moss using the cyanoacrylate superglue gel, same as always. Now first of all, I'm gonna go over the parts that we glued earlier, just to cover them up. When you're sticking moss, just use a little bit in a lot of places. If you use a big blob, it will seep through and just look rubbish. I'm also making sure to place the moss on the top areas as I said it just looks so much better as you can see here. Now I've had this moss growing in one of my other tanks on some rocks so I could just peel it off at any point and use it on another scape so that's what we're doing here that's why it looks so good. Normally if you buy it in the pots it doesn't look quite as good as this but in no time at all it will. Within a couple of weeks it'll look awesome. So I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. I've tried to put the moss on all the top pieces. Do you know what I mean? Like where the sort of light would hit first, where possible. I mean, places down below, I've used it to cover up bits of glue in that. But overall, I think that gives a really, really good effect, doesn't it? Now, bear in mind, there is a massive space over here, but that's because we're going to have loads of plants in that section. I'm going to try and leave this area as like a negative space area. So that just be open or swim room. I think that should work really well. It gives us a proper triangle composition there. Right, next up is the epiphyte plants. Um, I'm going to use a lot of Anubius Petite and just dot it around all these areas and little crevices and stuff. Be a bit random with this. Um, I just think it looks a little bit better. The good thing about a scape like this with lots of sort of wood branches and twigs everywhere, you don't actually have to stick the Anubius to anything. You can just cram it into gaps. It'll actually attach itself with its roots at a later date. So that looks solid. Now down low is where I like to keep most of the Anubius and small plants like this. And with Anubius, Boost of Philandra looks really, really good. So I'm gonna go with some of that as well. It just adds a nice little contrast to the colors and the textures. Boost of Philandra is one of those plants that's not just like in your face, but it does add so much to escape. It's hard to explain why, because like I say, it's like a subtle difference between what's around it usually. I've got two species here. We've got the wavy green and the red. Now out of water, immersed, they look similar, but when you get them in the tank, they look completely different after a while anyway. Again, exactly the same with the Anubius. You can just break bits off if you want and cram them into little gaps, or you can just keep them whole. It's up to you. If you've got a good root system on them like these ones do, you can plant the roots into the substrate. Just make sure you don't cover the rhizome, which is the top part of the plant, because it will rot. It needs good oxygen and water flow to that area, just like with any other epiphyte plant like Java fern, Anubius, and mosses as well, to be honest. So far, so good. I think that's looking absolutely awesome. Now, I want to place in some cryptocryonies in this sort of mid-range area. They'll come up to about this height, which will be perfect, and then we're going to have our stems behind it. All in that sort of corner side, some in this little front part as well, like a parva, the slow growth. Actually, I don't think I've got any, to be honest. No, I haven't got any parva, but I have got some patchy, which goes like a real nice, cool sort of browny tone. Oh, I've got some wenty green in this one, and I've got some of the uh, tropica variety as well of the Wenti, which is like much bigger. Look at the size of it, it should look really good. 
So this crypt is huge. Now it will probably melt back because all these leaves have been grown out of water. Sometimes it doesn't adapt too well straight away. Sometimes it goes perfect and you don't get any melt. But I'm suspecting with this one we'll probably get a little bit of melt back. That's fine. You can, to be honest, just trim all these leaves off now and wait for the rest to grow back. But for the sake of the video looking good, I'm going to keep it. I might have to adjust later on though. And I think now is a really good time to add in our filter. I've got a really cheap internal one. I love an internal filter. I just think they're really good for maintenance. The flow slows down when they're getting clogged. So you've got no choice but to take them out and give them a good clean. Filters is one of the things I'm most lazy with, so this really helps me. Right, it's now time to fill the tank up. I'm gonna do this so that I can plant the stems in. As I've said many times now, I like putting stems in and background plants. With the water in already, you can just see how they're sitting and it looks so much better straight away. Woohoo, so that is awesome and looking great so far. The water's gone a little bit misty and that is because this gravel took quite a lot of sort of washing. Still a little bit of gunk still coming off of it, but I just had enough of cleaning it. So it's going in and uh, the filter can pick up the rest. Yeah, there we go. Look, you can see, I mean, it's not horrendous, but it, it'll go in time. I'll just do a water change. But at the moment, we still got more to do. So I might as well do that first. Now in this section here, I want to put a nice Java fern. And in this one here, I want a little little accent of red something just coming up in that little hole there looks a bit odd otherwise doesn't it just an empty gap in the middle of nowhere it's calling out for some sort of focal point so yeah i'm going to put wendell off the uh java fern wendell off it's a little bit different it's a little bit more dainty and delicate i think it will go nicely in that gap and continue with that triangle composition also i'm not liking the crypts on this side i feel like they're actually taken away from the scape they just look too sort of matching either side do you know what i mean so i'm going to bring them over to here to close the sort of gap and we'll have a true triangle composition running across and an open negative space on that side So you should never be afraid to make changes to your tank. By switching this across, I've completely changed the look of it and in my head it just clicks straight away that it's correct. I mean, it might not look correct to you guys, but I love it. I'm also trimming off a lot of the much taller leaves because they look a little bit out of place. So it wouldn't be a nature aquarium without a java fern, would it? We're going to use the Wendelov type. Really interesting looking fern. It gets these little sort of fingers at the end. <laughs> oh yeah, that is looking sweet. Now I want to close that gap there slightly as well. So it's a bit dark, isn't it? Uh, close that gap there. So I'm just going to use one more pot and just fill that gap nicely and I think it'll just carry on those colours a little bit more as well and bring them into the foreground because we've got those variations of green haven't we and we want to sort of merge it a little otherwise it doesn't look that naturalistic. <laughs> oh yes looking sweet so right now we need our what's that floating what is that oh it's just a bit of leaf <laughs> I thought there was some kind of fish in there or something. Anyway, um, we now need to put like some stems in that area. Just peeking over the top there just to give A a bit more colour and B to close that sort of gap so it's a, a definite triangular composition. And I've got just the plants in mind. So out here is my plant storage area. And this is one of my shrimp tanks. The shrimp are doing actually really well in this tank. They're breeding like mad. And as always, the second you come out, oh, there's one. There's one, I've got black sakuras in here. I've got loads. In fact, I'm going to put some food in a minute just to prove that I'm not completely lying to you lot. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> There's lots in here. Anyway, look at that rotunda folia there. That is not HR, that's rotunda folia, hence the pinkness to it and not red. And the leaves sort of stay sort of bigger as well. Anyway, that's on a plant weight. Look at that. I've just These are just trimmings from another tank. And I just group them together and put them in that little weight. And that'll just sit at the back there. And we can put it to whatever depth we want then as well. And they'll all stay together nicely. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay, so that's looking absolutely awesome. The last thing we need to do that's going to really bug me otherwise is fill this gap but not with plants i think it needs another rock and a little bit of um let's go with the anubis petite again and carry that on that sort of theme along and uh, stick them in that gap and then that will just sort of complete the look and then it's just a case of getting this water super clear oh no it's not we just need our last little one in there as well I haven't decided yet but we'll, we'll get to that I 
I then added a little bit more of the Rotala Rotunda Folia to this little gap. I just really like the color of it and I wanted to bring it down a little bit lower as well, just for a little bit more of an accent. And then I chose Alternanthra Reineke for this gap. I just think it's gonna look really good, that massively vibrant red slash pink slash purple <laughs> coming through in that middle section. So it is now the next day guys and look the tank has cleared up beautifully i've just done a water change on it hence all those bubbles everywhere now the reason we do water changes when we first set a tank up is because there's going to be free floating organics in the water column it's inevitable all that wood going in the soil underneath some of it will leach through as well so straight away nice big water change i did about 75 percent filled it back up again looking good we can put our fish in as well now remember we're doing a fish in cycle because this all of, all of this system is brand new so what i do is low stock so we've only got a few harlequins at the end of the day we'll do daily water changes of 50 percent and we'll be adding beneficial bacteria after each and every water change as well including when we put the fish first in i always do this with my fish and i always have really good success basically it's lots of water changes there's no time for any toxicity to build up in the water at all and after a few weeks there's enough beneficial bacteria on everything so you're all set to go right anyway let's put our harlequins in i think they're going to really love this scape so here they all are at the moment. Now, I think it's gonna be easy to catch them if I just put a sprinkle of food in the top and then just get the net and just kind of swoop it. Or maybe I should put some food in the net. Actually, no, they're not gonna be that hard to catch, to be honest, the harlequins there. They're not the smartest of fish, but they are beautiful. <laughs> Right, all the harlequins are caught. We've still got some Siamese algae eaters in there and a load of shrimp as well. That They'll all be coming out and adding to different tanks. Possibly the harlequin tank um, when I change all this round very shortly. There they are, look, they're all in there. So it didn't take too long in the end. Um, it took me about 10 minutes to catch them all. The first big swoop, easy, and then I used the double net method as you could see. You just coax the fish into an area that you know is easy to catch. There's a Siamese algae eater. Don't be afraid. <laughs> well, let's add them into the new tank. Oh, well, you guys are very interested in what's going on, aren't you? <laughs> right then, here we go. In they go. Go, my friends. Look at that, looking wicked. Oh, we've got snail in there as well, good. Okay, straight away, they're gonna like be a bit freaked out. They're gonna try and hide. They don't know where they are. They've just been moved into some weird environment. But maybe you heard me say there, oh good, there's a snail in there. Lots of you guys don't like snails. I think snails are absolutely brilliant and I will be adding even more to this tank. Look at their colors in here straight away. We've just moved them. They've just been caught, they're stressed and they've still got these amazing colors on them. Isn't that brilliant? Look at that one, look. Let's look at the lamb chops. The copper in them is amazing. It might be this dark substrate, to be fair, helping them sort of really color up. So the darker the substrate, you do tend to get more colors because a white substrate can cause washing out. Oh, they're looking awesome. I love them. So due to the huge amount of bubbles after the fresh water change, the fish were absolutely covered. Don't worry, this isn't ick. I think it's because they were in the net and it's sort of slightly roughed up their slime coat and then you get oxygen bubbles sticking to it. It'll be gone in no time at all. Also, another important point I need to make, you might not notice any heaters in my aquariums. That's because I heat the rooms up. With this many tanks, it's far more energy efficient. My rooms are fully insulated, so is the ceiling and the windows are double glazed, so they hold heat really well. 